Here's a guide to understanding the driving radius feature in RV Trip Wizard, part of RV Life Pro, which also includes the RV Life GPS and Campgrounds app. The primary purpose of the driving radius is to show you exactly where you will be at the end of a driving day, based on your own preferences. Once you've got a trip open, you can get to your driving radius preferences by opening up your trip settings a couple different ways. The main way is to go into your trip tab and click on the wrench icon and trip settings. Then head to the routing and driving tab. The other way is to go to your map settings up here next to your user icon in the upper right corner and click on driving radius. Here you'll find a couple quick access switches plus a shortcut link that takes you straight to the right place in the trip settings menu. As a reminder, if you are adjusting your driving radius in trip settings with the red header and you discover the best distances for your travels that you want to apply to every new trip you build going forward, you'll also want to change these in your default settings menu here with the blue header. RV Trip Wizard will place a radius or multiple radii centered around your starting point to help you visualize how far you'll be able to travel in a single drive day. You can choose to place your driving radius lines either by hours or by miles. Your choice here really depends on how you think about your travel days, either in terms of how many hours you feel comfortable driving your RV in a day, or in terms of a certain number of miles you like to aim for when you travel. We're going to start with the thinking by hours option. It will give us just a single green radius. First, let's talk about your speed, which will go in the driving time estimate section. You may need to scroll up to find this in the tab. The routing engine estimate is based on posted speed limits, but does not factor in traffic, construction, or road closures. This also may not reflect speeds that you are comfortable driving in your RV. You can also set your own average speed, but remember that this is not just your cruising highway speed. This is something you'll want to determine by reviewing a full day of travel driving your rig, taking into account rest stops, bathroom breaks for kids or pets, and so on. Typically, RV Trip Wizard users enter either 50, 55, or 60 miles per hour. Moving down, we come to the driving radius section. Here you can decide whether you want your radii to be shown in the classic or advanced view. As you can see, classic will display perfect circles around your starting point, with distances shown as the crow flies, while the advanced view will show distances based on actual available roads and speed limits. Advanced is a much more accurate view, while the classic will give you a more general estimate of distances. You can also choose to not show the driving radius at all, but to show the last driving distance section, either classic or advanced must be selected. I'll leave it on the classic view to show the simple circle first. Now we can move down to the bottom section, driving distance. To get the single green radius line, you'll need to select the first option. Here you can enter however many hours you feel comfortable driving your RV in one day's travel. We'll put in six hours. With that, RV Trip Wizard can calculate the distance for your radius based on your average speed and average number of hours driving. As an example, we set an average speed of 55 miles per hour and entered in an average of six hours driving in a day. The distance for the radius will be speed multiplied by time driving, or 55 times six, which gives us a radius of 330 miles. Now on our map, we can see that single green radius in classic mode with the perfect circle 330 miles around our starting point. If we keep all the other settings but switch it from classic to advanced view, you can see that the circle has changed into this shape. Now it is showing exactly where 330 miles from St. Louis will get us by driving on real roads. Let's review how to get that single green radius again based on hours. Set your average speed. Choose between classic or advanced. Set your average drive time and make sure this option is selected. Save settings. If you prefer to think of your drive day in terms of miles, RV Trip Wizard also has you covered. Back in the Driving and Routing tab, we'll go all the way to the bottom Driving Distance section. Instead of showing your distance by hours, we'll select the option to show by miles. This also allows you to access the three ring radius option, which can help provide flexibility in finding just the right destination on your trip. One way of thinking of this is determining how many miles you're aiming to comfortably drive in one day and setting this as your green or minimum distance. Then you can set your red or maximum distance to reflect the very furthest you'd be willing to drive in a day. Lastly, you can set the yellow or middle distance right in between the other two to help you better visualize your route. 
Now instead of a single green radius, we see we have three rings centered from our starting point. Again, this is the classic view with perfect circles. If we want to see where real roads and freeways will get us, select the advanced view to be more accurate. Let's review how to get the three ring radius again. Select the minimum, middle, maximum option in the driving distance section and enter in your preferred distances. Choose between classic or advanced view. Save settings. It's also possible to use the by miles option to see just one or two radius lines instead of three. For one single radius based on miles, just set all three values to the same number. Or to show just two radii, Set the green to your smaller distance and the yellow and red to your maximum. To show you more about how to use the driving radius feature in RV Trip Wizard, let's plan a quick trip. We'll start a new trip just outside of Tampa here in St. Petersburg, Florida. Let's double check our radius settings before going into the planner. We'll go with the advanced radius and the three ring option. Each time you open a trip or start a new trip, your driving radii will be centered around your starting point. In some cases, the map might be zoomed in so close that your radii aren't visible. Just click on the minus button in the upper right to zoom out until you can see your rings. From here, we'll start making our way toward Nashville. Now, from St. Petersburg, we've heard good things about a city park around Jacksonville, and we'll search for it here because we're not sure if it's within our comfortable drive distance. The search shows us the park, and we see it's just outside of our green radius. We can also see in the park details that it's 264 miles from our starting point. We'll add it to the trip, and now the driving radii will automatically center around this new point on our itinerary. Each time you add a stop, the radii will recenter based on the new location. We can also explore the map to find our stops. So if we are heading toward Nashville, we can use our driving radius to see that somewhere on this side of Atlanta might be a good place to look. If your map doesn't show any campground icons, you may need to toggle the campground view on by clicking this button in the upper right corner. Then we can click around and decide which place we'll stop at for a few nights. For more information on what campgrounds are showing up, open your research tab and close up your trip tab if you need more viewing area. We've got filters set for four stars and big rig access, but you can set whatever filters you want by clicking on show filters up here. Once those are set, you can go to the list view. Here you can hover over the different campgrounds and the icons will bounce on the map to show you where they're located. This one looks pretty well rated and it's within our red ring. We'll add it to the trip. Again, once we add it to our itinerary, we can see the rings recenter around this new campground. By default, the driving radius will center around the location of your most recently added stop, but you can center your driving radii around any pin on the map. Either click on a campground and then the center button, or click on a point of interest and then the center icon in the corner. We'll go back to center around our last stop and it looks like we can make it to Nashville in one more drive. We'll add this KOA to our itinerary. Now that we're at our destination, we can also use the driving radius feature to help us discover nearby points of interest. Maybe we want to stay pretty close to our campground, so we'll set our minimum at just five miles, our maximum at 25, and our middle around 10. Then we can toggle on the points of interest here next to the user icon. And down in area attractions, we can click around and see what's nearby, like amusement parks, aquariums, and grocery stores. Some RV Trip Wizard users also use the driving radius feature to help plan rest stops or fuel stops by setting their intervals at around 120 miles and selecting rest area or fuel in the points of interest section of the research tab. When you're done choosing and booking campgrounds, you can turn off the driving radius to make it easier to view or to plan the rest of your trip. An easy way to do this is by going up into your map settings to bring up the map display and layers menu. Then click on driving radius and toggle show radius to off. And that's it for the driving radius feature in RV Trip Wizard. As always, when you're ready to navigate your trip using your phone or mobile device, 
Just open up your RV Life app, tap on the red menu bar, and then choose RV Trip Wizard. Here you'll find all your active trips, ready to get on the road.